Another day and another GTX 1080 Ti. However, this time from Galax, it's their EXOC Sniper in the wider aesthetic. Now they sent this over for two reasons. The first being that they want me to go to their event next month in November, which will be hosted in Bangkok, which will be on the 25th and will have some extreme overclocking featuring LN2. So that's gonna be crazy. I can't wait to cover that event for you guys. So with today's video, we're kind of gonna peel two potatoes with one peeler. Uh, anyone? Hey guys, you there? And for the overclocks on the 1080 Ti, we managed to get 2.04 gigahertz on the core and also for the memory, 11.8 gigahertz effective. And now this is going up against the GTX 1080 Strix, which is one of the most popular 1080 Strixes out there. We overclocked this to 2.06 on the core and also for the memory, that got around a gigahertz boost effective. And then we've got the Vega 64. My friend Shannon, I call him Shan for the fam, he borrowed me his Vega 64 card, managed to overclock this to 1637 megahertz on the core, and also for the HBM memory, we got this to 1010 megahertz effective, and we set the fan speeds on all three cards to 80%. So with that said, let's get on with an overclocking showdown. So we can see in those benchmarks, the 1080 Ti is performing where it should be. It's roughly 30 to 35% faster in a lot of the titles. Now this is all overclocked as well. The Vega 64 actually gained quite a considerable boost when I overclocked it. However, with that, the power draw does go up considerably, but I believe if you're an enthusiast and you're getting a Vega 64 card and you wanna go with the AMD lineup, you're probably gonna to wanna to get the best performance possible. So the Vega 64 card, I was pleased with the performance updates that AMD have released with their latest 17.10 driver, especially compared to the initial release of the driver they released in August. The Galaxy GTX 1080, of course, is performing quite well. When we look at the PCB, it's using the NVIDIA reference design, which on the 1080 Ti is really good to begin with. It's probably the most power efficient design out there for 1080 Ti's. And with that, you saw, of course, performance that's not gonna match something like an Aorus GTX 1080 Extreme Edition. However, it does perform quite close. That 3D Mark V strike score nearing 31,000 points is very respectable. And the fan speeds were actually not even noisy at all. I'll let you guys take a quick listen to both 80% and stock profiles. Of course, running through some more numbers with temperatures and power draw, all these three cars performed really well with 80% fan speeds. Of course, the reference Vega 64 model does get really loud at 80% fan speeds. However, it was good to see that this card was keeping all this temperature under wraps. So I really like this reference design from AMD, even though it's actually quite loud. I'm sure once the aftermarket models come in, they will do a much better job at keeping the noise down, but also keeping the temperatures quite low. Though further glancing over the EXOC 1080 Ti, it's got two 90 millimeter fans, RGB lighting on both the fans and the side plating. You've got an aluminum back plate and also the fans will stop when it's idling and the temperatures are quite low. Looking at the rear input and output, you've got one HDMI out and also three display ports out. Though with the single player benchmarks, I do do individual runs and also run the CAN benchmarks. Deus Ex was giving the victory to AMD with the 1080 versus the Vega 64, and also games like Far Cry Primal were scoring a victory for the GTX 1080. Though with the 1080 Ti, it was a notch above both these graphics cards, so we can see that that was pulling comfortably ahead. So yeah, this time around the benchmarks were a little bit boring. Everything was kind of as expected. 
uh, though it was my first time playing Quake Champions and I was just so bad at this game. <laughs> it's really fast paced. It actually looks really nice too. So really good for those Twitch shooters. People who play COD and stuff like that are really gonna enjoy Quake Champions when the final version is released. Though I'll probably have to go get some tips from Rocket Jump Ninja as he's really good at this game and I'm just, yeah, I'm really bad at it. I did, however, like this gun that kind of shot out three shots at a time and the rocket launcher was pretty cool too. But I had this guy like running around uh, with a saw and he was just like yeah he was, he was fast he was chopping me up a lot of the time so yeah that was that but also with the multiplayer benchmarks i do run them for quite a long time to try and weed out variances as multiplayer benchmarks are always going to inherently be inconsistent just due to the nature of them though if you guys do enjoy benchmarks then i'll refer you over to steve from hardware unboxed and he can test like 30 plus games in one go i don't know how he does it it's absolutely insane if I tested that many games personally, I think I'd just go crazy. It's so much data on a spreadsheet. I don't know how he does it, but I'll put the link in the description below for his channel if you like benchmarks. So in conclusion, with the GTX 1080 EXOC from Galax, what you're getting is a really nice card. It performs really well, even out of the box. The thermals are really good, and also the noise is really low too, but also the white aesthetic, that's definitely something that makes this card stand out from the rest. And also if you wanna put it in a white theme build, it's going to look really nice. I put it in the Air 740 in the background here. It's looking really schmick with a white and black theme build. So it does go in really nicely. And of course, you're not gonna be at any detriment with this 1080 Ti versus other 1080 Ti's. Of course, some of the more expensive ones will perform a little bit better, but there won't be a huge gap between this and the others, even if we compare it to the Hall of Fame, for example. But this one, will use less power for the performance you're getting. And of course, taking a quick peruse over the other two cards, the 1080 Strix, that performs really well, really nice card, and the Vega 64. I can't wait to get an aftermarket solution with a really good cooler to see how much lower the noise will be and see if we can get some better performance. Though the Vega 64 card, the stock cooler does do a good job of cooling, it's just the noise is pretty high. And with that, we did get some pretty good overclocks. So this is a great option for someone who's looking for an NVIDIA alternative and also wants to get FreeSync support. As FreeSync, of course, it is practically free versus G-Sync, which does add that module, does add cost to the monitor. Although what about pricing with the EXOC card? And this is where things get a little bit weird. In Australia, it's priced actually pretty well. You can currently get it for around 1,030 AUD off static ice, or if you're on eBay, there's currently a sale with 10% off. You can get it for around 1,000 AUD delivered to your door. So in Australia, you're pretty much covered Galax do offer good value for money though. If you're in America or the UK, I couldn't find this card for sale anywhere. And so this is sort of a critique of Galax. I'd like to see them get their stock, especially out on amazon.com. I think in America it accounts for like over half the sales of online goods. So you guys may want to get on that and start getting stock out because you guys do make good graphics cards and I'm sure people would want to pick one up and try one out if they were doing like a white themed build. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below, have you tried a Galax card or do you currently own a Galax card? And if so, what did you think of it? Also, if you haven't got a Galax card, would you like to buy one? If so, why? If not, why not? And I know that's a lot of questions, but I love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And make sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button with notifications turned on because you are not gonna not wanna drink what the Yes Man is brewing for you. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.